Welcome to Long Beach Meditation. The talk you are about to hear was given by Franz Manfredi on the second day of the Fall 2022 Mountain Refuge Weekend Retreat at Yokoji Zen Mountain Center. Please enjoy. Please uh, take your time and get comfortable. <clears throat> <laughs> <laughs> Your guess is as good as mine. Um, I uh, humbly ask uh, all of the... It's no small thing what you are doing. Every single person here is unbelievably brave, utterly precious and totally unique in all of space and time. Every single person within the sound of my voice is a bodhisattva. Every single person within the, sound, within the sound of my voice possesses that same Buddha mind, Buddha nature. So before I actually start, I want to humbly ask for your blessing. Please bless me that this talk may be of service to you and pleasing to the Buddhas, bodhisattvas and ancestors. Bhagavato Arahato Sama Sambuddhasa Namo Tassa Bhagavato Arahato Sama Sambuddhasa Namo Tassa Bhagavato Arahato Sama Sambuddhasa I bow to the fortunate one, to the worthy one, to the fully self-awakened one. Bhutam dhammam sangam sharanam gachami To the Buddha, the Dhamma, and the Sangha for refuge I go. So, uh, the only way I could make this long, slow walk up the hill and stairs to that really tall water slide that I'm at the top of right now, the only way I could make that work was to decide in advance. Hold on, let me check my notes. Franz? Please give a completely mediocre Dharma talk. <laughs> there will be some good parts and some bad parts and you won't be able to tie it up in a nice neat bow. So just cut yourself that slack. Okay, check. Um, and uh, I don't know if you are at the same spot in the retreat that I'm at. Uh, I'm at the sore knees, soft heart, and finally, all of the top 40 radio hits that they play at my place of business have... I mean, it's a miracle. And I won't curse you with them, because I'm sure you have a couple of your own. But today a song came to me, and I was very, very grateful for it. Um, and it may or may not uh, fit the theme for the rest of the talk but I have to share it with you. It's a very, from a very great sage and bard. Um, and a line from it goes, I see friends shaking hands, saying, how do you do? They're really saying, I love you. So in this place, this is the intimate place. This is where we touch into don't know mind. This is where we meet our experience exactly as it arises for us. This is where we get to practice this great way. 
as these phenomenal teachers have already spelled out for us. So in this place, we say things plain. We don't hide. How do you do means I love you. So please, on behalf of myself, my teachers, Long Beach Meditation, my wife, my family, any dogs I may have had the good fortune to pat in the past, I love you. Thank you. So, um, everybody kept saying amazing things in their Dharma talks and in their questions and comments. And I kept trying to grab them and hold them because I thought, oh, this is good. I'm using this. This is perfect. And now I don't remember any of them. <laughs> um, but there's a, something going on that I'd like to try to convey. And I, I'm just going to go for it. Um, walking around these beautiful, amazing grounds, I kept seeing these little bursts of yellow flowers in groups of four and five and ten and just here and there and this granite ground and the holly leaves and oak leaves and it's such a rugged place and yet these little happy almost hilarious yellow flowers popping out and I was so uh, struck by them I thought oh I'm going to take a picture and then find them online and learn their Latin name. This was a huge error. And I'm so grateful that I stopped myself from thinking that this was the way, right way or the most skillful way to relate to this flower. These yellow flowers have burst forth out of the cosmos, completely naked, utterly themselves, totally fresh, and my impulse is to learn what some long dead person called them. <laughs> then I would promptly cut them down, plunge them into a bath of formaldehyde, dissect them, and then put them in the uh, museum called Things Franz Manfredi Knows the Name of. <laughs> it's a big museum. Um, it seems like a very important place because it takes up a lot of real estate in here. But thankfully, thanks to your excellent Dharma teachings, uh, I was ready this time. And I caught myself. And I said, actually, Franz, your Latin name for this flower is an insult. This flower has given herself utterly to you. And is revealing the ever fresh, completely now, totally precise arising of awareness and is inviting you to do the same. So these little yellow flowers became very good teachers for me and I would encounter some yellow flowers and I would stop. And just look at them. And just breathe them in. This whole cosmos is arising moment by moment. And in the absence of any convincing argument as to why, I'll just go with because. And it feels like when I am available and open, this whole cosmos is presenting itself in a million different disguises to be known. The blue jays, those squirrels with the big, ludicrously puffy tails. Like, who needs that kind of a tail? It's amazing. Uh, the incredible dinners, uh, or meals rather. I'm just, I'm kind of fixated on the dinner we just had because of that soup. That was, that was something. Um, the eternally overflowing pots of coffee. <laughs> Thank you so much. So everything is presenting itself to be known. 
At least that's how it feels. And we're in this place, this most intimate place together. And I'm just filled with gratitude. In those times when I am able to get over my kind of comparing mind, my uh, trying to plan out my talks so that people will think I'm a very good uh, practitioner and may be very smart and want to have me around. Um, in those rare moments when I'm able to simply notice what's arising. And this amazing thing happens. Even the words are lying to you. It sounds like I'm saying this thing is presenting itself to me to be known. But actually, and I don't even know that there's words for this, this thing is presenting itself. And when I am open and available, we're instantly like this. Subject, object, duality, gone, instant. The yellow of the flower immediately interpenetrates my whole psychophysical being. And it gets saved from the museum and gets to live in eternity's sunrise. Or maybe I get to save myself from that museum and live in eternity's sunrise. In the suttas, there was a hermit, a practitioner of a different tradition. No, no slump, sincere practitioner, very serious, uh, named Bahia. And Bahia was thinking he, maybe he was very, very close very close. He had done all these austerities and he knew all these yogic techniques and he was a very great practitioner. Maybe he was very close to mukti, to breakthrough, liberation. And he had heard that some Buddha, some awakened one was in town. He's going to go meet this guy. And of course, in the suttas, because it's a story, it's a myth, which doesn't mean lie. Myth means something that happens over and over and over again somehow, and is too important and too precious and maybe too intimate to say any other way than the way they say it. So in the sutta, in the story, Bahia actually is visited by a long dead relative who had attained to some heaven, heavenly world because of their great merit. I said, hey ma'am, listen, I'm sorry, you're nowhere near it. You're, not only that, you're on the wrong track. You're this close to a major fall and it's gonna be good luck getting back. So he's like, well, hey, I'm gonna go see what this new guy in town's about. So Bahia goes and sees the Buddha and of course, wouldn't you know what the Buddha is gathering alms. This is one time of the day he's going to get some food in his belly. And so Bahia runs up, Hey man, why don't you tell me this Dhamma that you teach? Tell it to me in brief. Tell me, you know, hit me. And the, Dhamma, and the Buddha's like, yeah, yeah, got eating, going to get some food. Now is not the time. I'll, you know, I'll get back to you. And as the story goes, Bahia asks them two more times and says, listen, you know, life is very fragile and very short. I could go at any time, you could go at any time, and I wouldn't know. Please tell me. Teach me something in brief. And though brief, the Buddha gives Bahaya a complete teaching on emptiness. And maybe uh, you could take this with you. Uh, whenever anyone says emptiness or empty in this kind of context, the natural question should be empty of what? And in the suttas, the refrain again and again from the lips of the, of the Blessed One, from the Buddha is, empty of self and what belongs to a self. 
even saying that I can feel how heavy, what a burden. Empty of a self, oof, and what belongs to a self. I don't want to carry around what belongs to a self. I'm too busy looking at flowers. Anyway, the Buddha gives a complete teaching and brief on emptiness to this Bahia. Bahia practiced thus. In the heard, let there only be what is heard. In the seen, only what is seen. In the smelled, only what is smelled. In the tasted, only what is tasted. In the felt, only what is felt. In the cognized. In the, you know, chitta, heart mind. Only what is cognized. Bahia, if you practice this way, then you will not be there, you will not be here, and you will not be anywhere in between. So, because it's a story, Bahia went and practiced very sincerely, attained complete liberation, and was promptly killed by a runaway cow. <laughs> now, if you've been to India, you know this is a problem. Okay? I can, I've been there three times, the number of times I was on the wrong end of a cow. <laughs> I, you know, okay. Anyway. So, it's, uh, what strikes me about this story is that the Buddha does not say, nothing exists. What is heard doesn't exist, what is seen doesn't exist, what is smelled doesn't exist. Basically, all the objects of the six senses, he does not say they do not exist. And he doesn't say, the way to get liberated is to completely reject the entire world and all of the objects of the six senses and everything that arises from them. In fact, he invites Bahya into this incredibly intimate way of being. Let there only be in the herd what is heard. Like, get out of the way. Let the entire cosmos interpenetrate you. It's happening right now. What is seen, what is smelled, tasted, felt, cognized. Those rare times when I am open, open, swinging doors, wide open, those rare times that I am open and the 10,000 things can come inside with no Latin names, with no plans for taking a clipping and figuring out what it is when I get home, with no comparing. This is a much better rock than that other rock. I mean, just the sound of it's ludicrous, but we do this all the time with experience. Uh, sorry, I do this all the time with experience. When I finally get out of the way, the entire cosmos reveals itself to be known. Okay, by my clock I have 10 minutes. So now I get to see what I want to... Oh, it happened today. Uh, Robert, your mindful eating practice was really profound. And I've done mindful eating practices uh, of some form uh, almost every uposita, every full moon at Long Beach Meditation. Um, Almost. And uh, it was so funny because I was really enjoying it. And I caught myself doing that thing, the Latin name. I got the 
raised into my lips, and then the second it hit my tongue, and you're like, what does it taste like? And I literally, I know, this is, you'd think I'd know better by now. I, in my head, I literally said, a raisin. <laughs> a raisin, y'all. That's what it tastes like. <laughs> not mildly sweet, not jammy and boozy, not, um, I can taste the sun and the grape and the farmer's hand. I can, the breeze and the... <laughs> Raisin. <laughs> Luckily, <laughs> again, I caught myself. I said, oh yeah? What does that word mean? You use that word, I don't think it means what you think it means. So I tasted it. I was like, oh. <laughs> oh yeah. And it was all there. Revealing itself to be known. Presenting itself naked, open, and alive. So I really, uh, I'm really grateful that I remembered that because that was such a perfect example of what I wanted to talk about. So thank you again for that outstanding practice. I was also reminded when we got the raisin to our lip and feeling it on our lips, you know, when, when humans are infants in the first three months of their life, uh, that's why babies are always sticking things in their mouths because the nerve endings of the neural connection is all there. Like that's how they know the world. That's why, you know, when we, you know, a f fully grown human goes, because I'm really visual now, because all my processing is switched over. But when I was little, little, <laughs> put it in your mouth, right? Okay. And I was reminded of uh, of a story where uh, this teacher was talking about how um, it's really important to let our inquiry be very simple and childlike. He said, you know, think of taking, giving a present to a little baby and, you know, there's the wrapping paper and the box and you give them the, the object and they're like, they're either completely disinterested or they're like, oh, this is amazing. Look at this. And you're like, no, but now you got to rip it. I was just at a one-year-old's birthday party. And that whole thing of initiating children into the mystery of ripping open packages, it's really something. And so the mom finally had to go, and the baby was like, whoa, <laughs> like just flabbergasted. You can do that? <laughs> and then the, the ripping and the throwing, and that was so much fun. And I know the person who gave the gift and every adult in the room is like, oh, yeah, just wait. Just wait till you get the real present. And then the box, and like figuring out how to open the box. And then they got the present. <laughs> they got the present, and it was some like really cool elaborate ball with like maybe it made noises or it like blinked or something. And they saw it. the box <laughs> was the most interesting thing. They couldn't believe that you can close it and open it. And they were looking around at the adults being like, are you seeing this? <laughs> like, this is the thing y'all have had this whole time. <laughs> Loving it, right? And I know, and I, I'm, a, I'm a parent, my kids are big now, but I remember sitting there and being like, no, 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 you're not playing with it right. That's not the fun part, because I apparently know better. No, no, here, let me show you how to play with this thing. And they finally got the ball in her hands, and she was, you know, looking at it and tasting it and, rolling and, and then you know this whole journey and um, I was just reminded because this teacher was saying you know this is how to relate to our practice you know we we read and we study and we hear Dharma talks and hopefully it's of use but in the end it always comes down to the point of contact right there it always comes down to <clears throat> In the heard, the heard, and the seen, the seen, and the smell, the smell, and the tasted, the tasted, and the felt, the felt, and the cognized, the cognized. That immediacy. I just have to take a minute and talk, to, talk about that word, immediate. How come no one told me that it means not mediated? Like, the word mediated, right? Like, um, uh... I want to taste something spicy and you give me some a burrito and it's got spicy in it. So the the taste of the spice is mediated by the burrito. It's like the vehicle for it, right? But also 
it has a role to play. It 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 changes it. Or if I want to uh, drink water, I have to put it in this vessel and I have to bring it to my lips. Or I'm looking around the room and everything that is arising before me is being mediated by my sensory apparatus, my ideas, all the words I know, the times I've been here before, maybe even thinking about breakfast tomorrow. But practicing to get out of mediated experience and into immediate, right there so close, so intimate. This is, uh, this is why we do silly things like eat a single raisin over 10 minutes or sit while our knees hurt or walk in a circle, or chant these precious words like jewels dripping from our mouths. This is why we draw together in community, because the whole cosmos is waiting to give itself and to invite us into this dance. I close with uh, another piece from that ancient song. I see skies of blue, clouds of white, the bright blessed day, and the dark sacred night. And I think to myself, what a wonderful world. It is my sincere hope that my words have been pleasing to you and that I've been of service. Thank you, thank you kindly for your attention. May all beings be happy.